The Florida medical examiner conducted an autopsy and noted hematomas and skin lesions that looked like insect bites. The report stated she died from a blood clot brought on by prolonged bed confinement and severe dehydration. This was Lisa in Halloween. Lisa's aunt, Del Liebreich, is the next of kin. She is suing Scientology for $80 million in damages. It's not about money, she says. She just wants to get a judgment against the people who, in her opinion, are responsible for Lisa McPherson's death. Well, I think it's horrible. It's, it's just awful that anybody's allowed, how they can sit and watch a human being, you know, die like that. No doubt. They got her no help. They watched her die. On the second anniversary of Lisa's death, Scientology critics commemorated the tragedy with a candlelight vigil in front of the Fort Harrison. Bob Minton is among them. Some 3,000 Scientologists surrounded the demonstrators and accused the police chief of Clearwater of orchestrating a witch hunt against the church. Mr. Weinberg, according to Scientology attorney Sandy Weinberg disputes the conclusions reached by the medical examiner. Due to bed rest and severe dehydration. That's what the, that's what the medical examiner who issued the report said. Now, what now... Well, as it turned out, she is, she is wrong, and she is very biased and very prejudiced. So, Mr. Weinberg, you're saying that the, the samples uh, were tainted. Those results are wrong, and that they do not match it, and that therefore uh, this woman, this, this pulmonary embolism did not result from severe dehydration. It resulted, as most pulmonary embolisms, resulted from some sort of a trauma. Not true, says Ken Dandar, the attorney for Lisa's aunt, paid by Bob Minton. There is absolutely not one ounce of medical proof to that. All of the medical proof is to the contrary, that she suffered a long and torturous death, that she was in a coma for several days. The blood clot was only a partial occlu occlusion, and there was still blood coming through the blood clot. It was the dehydration that killed her. Without water, you're dead. She died because she wouldn't succumb to their rules they, or their instruction. She wanted out. There's more than two people that know that she wanted out. And she refused to give up. And they've just let her die. Few Clearwater citizens dare to criticize the Scientologists. Clearwater was still a small city when I was a small boy. It was like 30, 35,000 people. Now when you go to downtown Clearwater, you see them walk around the streets. They're like zombies. Oh, they don't bother me. You know, they're a bunch of young people. They're beautiful people. They really are beautiful young people. Huh? I don't know why they want to belong to it, really, because they are so lovely, lovely-looking people. Well, I know um, L. Ron Hubbard wrote a book, and uh, they're a re I, I consider a religious cult, but mm -hmm. other than that, I don't know a whole lot about them. They own a lot of property in the area. Mm -hmm. Most of Clearwater's Scientologists live at this highly guarded complex. Our camera team's arrival is reported immediately, along with the fact that Gabe Caceres is with us. He was the mayor in the 1970s when the sect first moved here. They build a fence around it. I don't know if it's to keep the public out or to keep the members of Scientology in and control them. But you can't get in or out without the clearing the security. Midway through the interview, the former mayor breaks off when Scientology spokesman Brian Anderson approaches us. With him around, Gabe Caceres does not want to say another word. So you came just to say hello to us, or? Here, here's, here's a German TV station bringing these people into Clearwater. We didn't bring anybody. Yes, you did. No, we did not. Absolutely. Oh, we were harassing the church? Absolutely, with, with, uh -huh. with putting these puppets up to just demonstrate in front of the church. The former mayor prefers to be interviewed a few miles away in downtown Clearwater. You want to walk up yeah. a little bit? Why don't we walk? Yeah. But when we arrived, Scientologist so Brian were, Anderson was the already there waiting for us. This shows you the, uh...
Scientologist Anderson stays close on our heels while the former mayor tells us how it all began. When they first came in, they bought two properties under false names. This is truly an occupied city, and now it's being used uh, for brainwashing, and the Scientologist uh, main claim to helping the Clearwater area is to set up a brainwashing factory, which they have done. No, that's not true. We're, we're open for tours all the time. I give tours all the time. Could we walk in with you and get a well, tour? Well, I, I would have my... I would have people only of good heart actually giving a tour. Uh, give, uh, I would want to give a tour to only people who are of, of um, you know, not someone who's trying to harass or bother or upset our citizens. Let me answer that question. We're going to be here forever. We knew at the moment we moved in, we're going to be putting the name of our plaques, the Church of Scientology. It's obviously that people are going to know who we are. Inside, Brian Anderson proudly shows what the Scientologists are doing for their community. Ron Hubbard's sect wants to be respected by all and reacts aggressively if any skepticism prevails. As any critical questions about Scientology becomes somebody who is out to destroy the church? No, I think that's, I think that's silly. Uh, I have no qualms about, about criticism. There are critics on the internet, there are critics, you know, who cares about critics? I mean, even... Well, you do, you, you hate that. Well, what I, what, what I dislike, and I, I would say we have a, a problem with, philosophically, are those individuals who are hell-bent on destroying minority religions. When I saw two people come out there, and uh, that was their big demonstration, I was laughing. I go, why don't these guys get a life? I mean, is there only life attacking Scientology? Are they kind of bleeding like leeches off the, off the liveliness of the church? Bob Minton feels the anger of the Scientologists up close and personal. Private investigators intrude on his business partners and family members. Are you? His two daughters have been followed on their way to school. His wife, Therese, may wish her husband had chosen a different fight. Well, I try not to let it bother us. I just get on with life. I make sure that the children get on with life and, and Bob, within the sanctity of our home, um, gets on with life. We just don't let it stop us doing anything that we want to do. I don't want their life to be ruled by terror. Um, so we play down that aspect within our home and we play up the, or we, we talk about the fact that Bob is standing up for his principles and that's why we support him. The combative millionaire is clearly proud of his wife. That we had to work together as a team in this because I couldn't, you know, fight against the Scientologists and against my wife at the same time. It just was, wouldn't be practical. So we've been very much uh, uh, teammates in this. They've leafleted the entire neighborhood. Um, they've uh, picketed outside our, our house several times. They think that's well within their rights. Um, you know, and we just have to say, fine. <laughs>